Howdy folks. So anyway, uh, recently I was looking into uh, the Linux kernel um, to do with InfiniBand and uh, these older uh, InfiniBand host bus adapters. This is an old InfiniHost 3 card and of course in the Windows world these have been long, uh, long deprecated and obsolete. But in, of course in the Linux world you can still use these um, because of course the, uh, the MTHCA driver is still in the Linux kernel tree. However, I've recommended in the past not to buy these these older cards, um, even though they, you know, they, they still do DDRX4 and speeds like that, because uh, any card that uses that driver has um, deadlock issues with NFS. And recently, the bug was actually fixed uh, in the kernel. So uh, if you're running a, a modern kernel, like let's say 4.4.12 or newer, uh, you should be able, um, you, or you can use these older cards, uh, and they don't have any lockup issues. And so I had two of these. Uh, lying around, and I thought I might as well buy a cable um, in order to be able to use it. So I just went out on eBay and I just bought. Um, this was a new cable. It's a Zarlink. Um, it's a 50-foot uh, optical cable, and um, it's just like uh, the Intel optical cable that I have. Um, that one was used. This one was new, and this was not actually that expensive. It was like 20 or 30 dollars or something, um, relatively inexpensive, and it was brand new. And so anyway, it arrived today. And I went to plug it in, and it uh, does not come up at 4x DDR like it's supposed to. It comes up at 1x SDR, uh, which is the, literally the lowest speed that it can come up at. Uh, and I have validated that it's not the host bus adapters. Um, it is actually the cable. Um, these are actually LEDs on this, uh, this cable. And this side, when you plug it in, the LED is green for a first, you know, split second, and then it goes red. This one, it's always red. And according to the data sheet, um, that means that there is an internal transmitter failure. Um, so likely, I believe, the transmitter, or, or, you know, there's four transmitters in here. Um, at least that, that's, that's the way I interpreted the data sheet. Um, it looks like uh, there's something wrong in this uh, transceiver head. And so uh, I'm going to see if I can get uh, a replacement sent out. But I thought, might as well um, take this thing apart because it's got what look like torque screws on here. And uh, I just thought, you know, it might be potted or something. But if it's not, it might be kind of cool to see inside. So, of course, uh, I can't resist. I didn't really want to take apart my other cable, of course, because it wasn't as obvious to get apart and also... I really need that cable, so this one, don't care so much for it. Um, I'm not really sure, I'm, I don't think that there's anything I can do to fix this, but, you know, might as well take it apart. So, it does actually appear that the top is loose. Okay, so the top is just, uh, looks like uh, an aluminum casting of some kind. And it's very pretty. Let me uh, let me zoom you in quite a bit closer here. How close can I get? So I'm actually looking at this through the viewfinder because this is uh, way way too small for me to see um, with the naked eye. But uh, the fiber that so that is obviously the fiber there, and that comes into a block and there looks like there is some form of, of prism or or a light guide of some kind. Uh, it's been a long time since I've done optics. And then uh, that would be your uh, your laser diodes in there. And so this is the uh, the sort of latch mechanism. Kind of looks like it comes out of here but it doesn't want to. Um, I wonder if there's an easy way for me to get this out or if this is all I'll be able to show you because I don't really want to completely destroy this um, I know you're definitely not supposed to do this but it's already broken so so yeah there's there's you can see there's a uh, there's a two LED packages on there and uh, what look like the uh, those are most likely uh, just some some termination resistors for the uh, the high-speed pairs, of course, that go out to the uh, CX4 connector. And so this thing apparently runs off of a single 3.3 volt rail. Um, and there doesn't seem to be any real power supply componentry on here, unless it's on the other side of this board. 
but I'm not sure how to get that out. So, anyway, and this little boot, I've noticed this little boot is kind of loose. And so, uh, all that's under here, it's just, it's got, uh, you can see there's some sort of, whoop, some sort of Kevlar or, or some sort of nylon, not Kevlar, it'd be nylon strands that run through the uh, cable for uh, sort of tension resistance. And then there's, it looks like a metal crimp on here. And that's just sort of slotted in here. And uh, that's, that's actually what's broken on uh, the, the other optical cable that I have. I was hoping to be able to replace it uh, with this one because mine actually has uh, the actual orange outer uh, sheath of the cable is actually cracked and has been pulled away and there's actually bare fiber visible on mine. It works fine, but uh, I just don't like that. So I wanted to be able to replace it with this one, but I guess that's not going to happen. So anyway, um, yeah, I don't think there's any there's much else to show you here. But uh, yeah, that's that's what's inside one of these things. It's uh, not as much circuitry uh, as I expected. It's just uh, just sort of just one little optical block, and that's about it. So anyway, I'll uh, I'll update you if I uh, get this thing working or uh, you know when I get my replacement. But anyway, that was all I wanted to show you. So as always, thanks for watching.